Holy mackerel! <laughs> yes! Gosh! See, this, is, this is what happens when you deal with someone from your, the other generation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how you doing today, Tom? Oh, well, good now. <laughs> That's great to hear. So before I get into all the questions, I just wanted to say, you have been a major part of my childhood. I remember <laughs> watching the Clone Wars, um, playing Call of Duty Zombies, watching Kim Possible, playing Batman. I watched Wolverine the X-Men. I don't know how many times I watched that show, but I watched it over and over again. So I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank well, you so much. Well, thank you. Wait, wait, no, thank you. Cause you know, that's what, put shoes on my kids feet so <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much so what event in your life made you realize that you wanted to take this as a profession uh well i i, I you know i grew up watching cartoons you know when in the united states uh, back when i was a kid uh there were only three television stations uh, there were you know there was uh abc cbs and nbc i can't hear you You can't, can you hear me? No, oh, hold on. I don't, I didn't do anything. Come back and, can you hear me? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now I can hear you. Better. Yeah, oh, for man. some reason, yeah, for some reason, we, we all started sounding like we were a mile away. <laughs> let me, let me plug my uh, charger in here just to make sure. Okay. But, uh, so, can you hear me okay now? Yes, I can hear you great. Great. Well, the, uh, uh the micro where's my microphone? Um, no, I, I was a, a kid, uh, you know, living here in the middle of the United States, and uh, there are only three TV stations, you know, at that time. And so summertime was boring as, because, mm, you know, it was, it was hot and humid here, and it was too much to go outside, and uh, there was nothing on on television except for reruns you know from tv shows from you know 1950s and 40s and a lot of warner brothers i was a warner Brothers. can i say this because now i'm a disney person but uh but yeah i was uh, i was pretty much a warner brothers kid um and uh, you know so i would just sit there watching you know these cartoons that were made before i was ever born and i, I would just once in a while kind of you know try to talk a little bit like some of the the characters and my mom my mom tells me that when i was a uh, like a three-year-old she said uh, my grandfather my grandfather was from germany and he'd be watching uh, uh american football and cussing at the tv when when his team was losing but he was cussing in german so uh you know apparently she said i was i was uh repeating whatever he was saying and he would just laugh and go, you don't want to know what the kid's saying. <laughs> but, but yeah, when I, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm the poster child for ADD. I mean, I, you know, back when I was a kid, they didn't have a word for, you know, people that literally could not sit still. And um, my, this wouldn't fly today, but my, uh, my first grade teacher, my kindergarten teacher actually tied me to my chair with jump ropes, you know, on, on, on a few, several occasions. Are you serious? What? Yeah. Yeah, oh she would I, literally. I would just be tied to my chair, and, uh, and she was a wonderful teacher. It's just I was just completely destroying any kind of you know teaching ability there. But <laughs> so I uh, I I learned pretty quickly that I could still get attention. I could still make people laugh by doing silly voices. So you know I uh, uh, I, I you know was just trying to mimic the the cartoons that I, I watched every day and, and I grew up watching so but yeah the way I got in the uh, in the in the voiceover work was I was 15 years old it was 1977 um, Star Wars had just come out and uh, of course you know that changed the world I mean for my generation when we we all went to go see Star Wars we came out of there different different people you know it was it was a whole different you know, um, I kind of like a religious experience, I guess, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah. So of course, immediately I'm trying to do C-3PO and Darth Vader and, and all that stuff. And, uh, uh, so I, 
I noticed though that summer that uh, well, you know all the commercials sounded exactly the same because they were all done by the same FM DJs. You know the come on down to the Waterbed Gallery this Friday, you'll get ten percent off. You know they all sound the same, and uh, so I thought, well, you know I do all these silly character voices, so maybe I could you know get get myself on a radio spot. And I had no idea, no clue that people got paid for it. I was, you know, I'm 15 years old. I just, I just thought it was someone that worked at the radio station, which kind of is true. Right. And um, so I started calling, you know, the local advertisers, and of course, most of them were like, you know, like, you know, <laughs> <they're> like, <laughs> you know, because uh, I was, I had no tact. I was like, yeah, I heard your commercial for whatever, and it sucked. It was really bad. <laughs> uh, but the. Uh, uh, I, one day I called the American Cancer Society uh, charity and they because uh, uh, they had a particularly horrid uh, radio commercial. So uh, about an hour later, the phone rings and it was the biggest ad agency in Kansas City, which is where I, I live and uh, right dead center in the country here. But um, so they uh, they didn't know I was a kid. You know, they were like, oh, we understand you're willing to donate some voiceover work. Well, you know, donate went right over my head. And, and voiceover work, I'd never heard that term before, but I figured that out. So uh, they're like, yeah, we're, we're doing our big annual, you know, fundraiser. Uh, you know, we're recording it this Thursday. So uh, uh, again, I never t I didn't tell them how old I was. <laughs> so I had my dad drive me down to the recording studio. And uh, of course, they walk up to him. You know, because I'm I'm sitting here with my my fringy cut off you know jeans and my tennis shoes that were stained green because I was cutting lawns for two dollars a piece, and uh, uh, and the the agency was was renting the studio out of their own pocket because it was a charity thing, and um, so this guy you know I'm the engineer setting me up on the microphone, you know, he's, he's going, you know, he's, you know, doing this business, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I'll put my headphones on and, but I look through the, the glass, you know, to the outer studio and this poor guy's just getting his butt chewed. His boss is in there going, <laughs> you know, cause they, you know, and he, he was, I'm sure it was something like you hired a freaking kid, you know? So, uh, so I looked up though and I said, the. Uh, um, do you want this in some kind of uh, uh, accent? And because I didn't know the term dialect, and um, and the boss guy hits the talk back and he goes, "What?" I said, "Do you do you want this in some kind of accent?" He goes, "What what do you mean accent?" And I said, "I don't know. I I think this would sound good like the Pepperidge Farms guy because back in the '70s and '80s, the the spokesman for Pepperidge Farms jellies and products and stuff." was this 80 year old uh, guy from New England. And he goes, he goes, oh, you can talk like a, a an old man from New England. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, well, let's hear that. So I kind of still remember some, every weekend, a couple dozen Kansas City families have a couple dozen garage sales. But on July 1st and 2nd, a thousand Kansas City families are going to have just one garage sale. A very big garage sale. A sale so big, as a matter of fact, it'll make the walls of the Glenwood Manor Convention Hall bulge. We call it the Kansas City Garage Sale. All the bargains, you know, it was like a, all the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. But all the bargains, well, those go to you. So anyway, they, uh, they were like... <laughs> so I look up and, and, they, and they're both just going, okay, yeah, that was good. And the engineer's like, that was uh, 29 seconds on the nose. Perfect. And so I, I read it two more times and they were all happy and I was happy. And uh, so, you know, we parted company. But a week later, I got a phone call from the same uh, the same ad agency that said um, they called and they said, do you um, can you do other voices? And I'm like, oh, yeah, tons. And they said, can you do a cowboy? And I'm like, yeah, I can do sort of cowboy. And um, they're like, so they're like, look, can you hear? I'm like, I'm like, so I, I what well, all I was doing was uh, Im imitating a guy that was the voice of Walt Disney's, you know, the wonderful world of Disney came on every Sunday in the United States, and his name was Rex Allen, and he was the narrator for those Disney programs. 
So they're like, great. So the same thing happened. I had to, my dad drove me down. They come up to my dad and he's like, no, that's, that's the guy you were talking to. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking at the scripts. There were six uh, TV commercials and my dad, they, they said, they, they handed the paperwork to my dad and they said, well, you're, you're going to have to sign the paperwork because he's, he's not an adult. And my dad, and this had not happened at the other session because it was a charity thing. There was no money. And, uh, and I didn't know, I, I, and I didn't know I was going to get paid for this one either. I had no idea. And, uh, my dad, you know, signing stuff and he, and all of a sudden he looks over and he goes, Tommy, Tommy, they're paying you for this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he, goes, he goes, they're paying you to do this. And again, this is 1977. I was 15 years old or just to turn 16, I guess at this point. And I'm thinking 20 bucks, you know, what? Yeah. Boy, a $20 bill. That would make me happy. And I'm like, oh. And he goes, oh, they're paying you a lot. And I'm like, $40? You know? <laughs> and he's like, no. And I'm not, no joke. He goes, no, they're paying you $1,200. And I swear to God, <laughs> what went through my head, dude, was, uh, was it 12 or 100? 1,200? And then I went, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting a car. So, uh, so I did, that's what I did. I, I took that $1,200 and I bought my very first car. So, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I started working regularly in Kansas city here. And, uh, and, uh, when I got to college, oh gosh, by the time I got out of high school, I would probably have done maybe 50, 60 commercials, hundred. By the time I got out of college, I'd done two or 300. And, uh, so I knew what I wanted, you know, one, I'm like, this is, this is, you know, who wants to work when I can make money talking? So, <laughs> uh, so I went to, uh, I went to, uh, uh, Chicago, which was the nearest big city. And, uh, I, I actually started first producing television commercials cause, uh, you know, I wasn't making enough money to live as a voiceover guy yet. So, uh, on my lunch hour, I would go and audition for, you know, other ad agencies and stuff. And pretty soon I realized I can make more money on my lunch hour than the whole rest of the day. So uh, uh, my wife, I, we had got, I got married by then and uh, uh, we moved to Los Angeles because that's the only place in the United States that does. Uh, there's some thumping, my son's <laughs> jumping off the bed. But uh, yeah, so, you know, L.A. is the only place that does uh, uh, cartoons. So I... I we packed up everything and moved to LA and oh my gosh I got an agent within about a week or so and it just kept going from there and I I actually used to keep track of how many individual scripts I had read you know TV commercial radio commercial cartoon episode a movie trailer whatever and I stopped counting at something like 30,000 <laughs> so Wow. That was a law, and that was and that was 10, 15 years ago. So God knows what it's up to now. So. Exactly. Yeah, all the roles he's done now. That's an awesome story. I can only imagine fifteen years old, twelve hundred dollars. I don't know what I would have done to someone. Like <laughs> well, yeah. Well, and it was twelve hundred dollars in in nineteen seventy seven. So today right. that would probably be like twenty five hundred, you know, or three thousand. Wow. You know, so I, yeah. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, I, well, I bought a car. You know. I'm, crazy wow was voice acting always your goal so voice acting was always no no i i i didn't even know you know such a thing existed until you know like that summer when i started thinking i'm watching this you know watching cartoons and going well what is that? wait who where does this come from you know who who does this and you know i could tell that the, there was a very small number of people that did all that stuff because I would watch the credits. I'm like, so of course, everything for Warner Brothers was Mel Blanc. Everything from Hanna Barbera was, um, um, oh gosh, I'm spacing, um, <laughs> Dawes Butler. Uh, you know, so it it was obvious just from the credits that this was not a you know a huge industry. Uh, so. You know, I found out later, of course, how incredibly small an industry it really is. I mean, this even today, uh, there are probably, I, I would say there are a hundred actors that do 
seventy-five percent of all the voiceover work. Literally, I mean, it's, I, I would, you know, people are like, "How do I get into this?" Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to be encouraging, but the truth is, and I'll say to them, I'm like, "Well, you know, numerically, your your odds are better." Getting into the, you know, on a professional basketball team than getting into LA because there are actually three times more basketball players, you know, than there are, you know, cartoon voiceover folks. So, and most most people in this industry don't don't make their the main living doing um, uh, cartoons. They 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 get it from commercials, you know, just regular TV commercials, radio commercials. There's because there's so many more. You know, there for every one cartoon episode, there's you know five thousand radio commercials. So that's where most of the people in in the industry make their living. In my case, uh, I don't. It's uh, movie trailers. Actually, most of my most of my work is movie. Some, you know, Tim Allen is the Shaggy Dog Four from Walt Disney Pictures. Starts right here at theaters everywhere. Rated PG thirteen. You know, or. Um, it's uh, it's Walt Disney's The Little Mermaid. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere, starring all your favorite Disney characters. You know that that kind of thing. So that's that's where I get most of my uh, uh, most of my income. So that's really cool to hear. Um, because I've definitely heard your voice. I did, I was looking. Funny thing, I was looking at the roles you've done, and you've been uh. in so much more than I could even possibly imagine. Like you talking about the commercials you're doing, or I didn't even know because I've heard your voice before as a kid. Even before it shows, like in commercials oh, yeah. and movie trailers, I've heard you before, and it's just well. So what crazy. what city are what city are you in? I'm in Georgia now. I used to live in New York. Well, okay, because yeah, are you near Atlanta? Yes. Yeah, Atlanta is huge. Uh, it's, oh, Matt. <laughs> it's becoming like you know they they call it the Hollywood of the South, you know, and it, it really is a, a giant uh, hub for this stuff. And I always say to people, you know, if you're if you're near a, a big city like Atlanta or you know, New York or whatever. There are you know places that will teach um, teach you how to do voiceover. You know, uh, but especially now with COVID, everyone in the industry is scrambling to figure out how to do stuff exactly like we're doing now. So, I mean, for the first time in my life, you know, over the last six months, I'm auditioning for cartoon voices, just like we're doing right now. You know, I and uh, I, I just booked something well i can't talk about it but i did right. say yeah, i just i just booked a, a new series awesome. you know and uh and, and it, it was just like this you know i was like that's just you know and i come away going this is really weird but it works so. that's how have you been adjusting to all this covid stuff by the way well for me it wasn't that it wasn't that much of an adjustment because i've been working from my own studio for oh gosh 15, at least 15 years, maybe, maybe more. Um, Cause when I was in LA, uh, the, you know, the traffic has gotten so horrendous. Of course, it's really, it's actually really great now. Cause no one, <laughs> right, yeah. but um, the traffic had gotten so bad that I came home one day realizing I had spent five hours driving and one hour on a microphone. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And, um, uh, so I put in a studio in my house, you know, this is 20 years ago, but uh, I started working out of uh, my house in LA. And uh, so I was already, you know, pretty set up to do that. And I had a, a we, we moved back uh, to Kansas City, which is where I grew up and you know, all the all the family was here. So um, it really wasn't an adjustment for me, but for a lot of people, it, it was. I mean, there've been a lot of voiceover people that are just out of business, you know, they don't have a studio, they don't, they don't, uh, you know, they don't, uh, you know, they're scrambling, try to figure out how to hook something up. Because there is a world of difference between doing something that sounds good for a podcast versus something that is good enough to put in a Disney movie. Right. You know? right. Uh, their, their standards are completely different. So, yeah, the only, the only time over the last 10 or 15 years, the only time I've gone back to L.A. is if I'm... Uh, I'm working on the Oscars. I'm the announcer. I, I'm the guy that they've used for a lot of the uh, uh, Academy Awards. You know, live from the corner of Hollywood and Highland, it's the 94th Academy Awards, brought to you by you know that kind of. Uh, and the uh, and of course the Star Wars movies. If I'm if I'm doing a, a, a TV series, 
or, or something like that, then they're cool with me doing it from here. But if it's a feature film, they, they want me there in the booth, uh, partly because they can control the sound, you know, more, more precisely, but also because uh, security, there's no way in hell they're gonna send me a script for the new Star Wars. Yeah, movie. oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, yeah. no they, they actually, it's no joke. They have, they actually have some, but, well, hey baby, come here. Say hi, I'm on Instagram Live. Hi. It's my son, Logan. Hi. You say hi. Hi. He's in Atlanta, Georgia, where you were born. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, Grady Memorial. But, uh, the, uh, yeah, they actually have somebody, uh, a security guy that's you know we're we're in this big sound stage that you could probably put a hundred people in and there's this monster screen and um and we're looking at the screen well there's a guy that sits under the screen and is staring at us and all he's doing is if anybody picks up a cell phone that might be pointed at the screen where you could like take a snap of you know, Princess Leia dying or something that would, you know, freak everyone out. Uh, that that person's job is he stands up literally and walks up and goes, I'll take that. And wow. cause you, yeah, you actually, you have to, you have to agree to allow that level of security. They can reach out and just take it out and you have to unlock it. And if you got pictures of whatever Star Wars movie I'm working on, you're fired. It's like, yeah. So, they take that there, seriously, yeah. so there's no yeah so there's no way they're gonna send a script to me so. <laughs> over email yeah how'd you get into, how'd you land the roles for the phone war somebody asked well i had i started doing uh, uh star wars voices gosh back in 1993 i'm guess somewhere there 93 and uh and it was video games because and they were brand you know no one had any idea if, if if the whole concept of a video game was going to function. I mean, George, George, you know, like everybody of that era and that age was like, what the hell are you talking about? What? <laughs> Who's going to play a game on their, you know, computer? I mean, right. so um, once they, you know, convinced him that this was a, a new, cool, up and coming thing, uh, he decided the first game was not going to be a Star Wars game. He, he wanted it to be something that had no connection to Star Wars in case it was a complete disaster, then it wouldn't be a Star Wars disaster. Right. So it, uh, it was called The, the Dig, and it, it had kind of an Indiana Jones vibe, you know, it was an archaeologist and stuff like that. And um, uh, so that's the first stuff I did, which is miscellaneous voices on that. And, and then the next one was a Star Wars game. And I'm, I don't remember what it was, Rebel Squadron, or I, I don't know what, but some, somewhere around 1994, I would guess. And uh, so they immediately started needing people to imitate the voices uh, from the movies. So the, uh, sorry, uh, oh, sorry, my dog is underneath my chair. Working at home's great. <laughs> you have a dog curling up on my feet while I'm trying to talk. Right. But uh, so, uh, yeah, I think the first big character I did was uh, I think I did Tarkin back in the day. You know, you prefer another target, a military target, the name of the system. And um, and I did Boba Fett back when Boba Fett was British and not not a Kiwi. Oh. <laughs> and um, and uh, one day, though, I was just sitting there reading, you know, my, what, you know, again, it was probably TIE Fighter Pilot number two. And uh, there was lines for C-3PO. Well, all of us, you know, the guys that do what I do, we all, we always joke around, you know, we always read everything. You know, if, if I see something and it's a uh, Fred Flintstone, I'm going to go, yeah, Bonnie, get your hands off me fruity pebbles, you know. Um, and so I started trying to read the, the 3PO lines. Well, what I didn't know was that, you know, they actually were, uh, you know, technologically, there was no way to record Anthony from London. They, they actually back then had to, had to hire a studio there in London, have, hire a director, hire a producer, you know, for like, you know, 10 lines. So, uh, and I, you know, I didn't know any of that. So what I, apparently what happened is they had recorded what I was just joking around with 
and uh, the director walked into George and, and had a little, you know, one of those little tape recorder things. And he played about 10 seconds of me. And George was like, what? And he was like, no, that's, that's not Anthony. That's this guy in LA that, and George's response was, oh, he's okay. Use him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everyone's like, they, you know, people ask me about my big audition with George Lucas. I'm like, no, it was, oh, he's okay. Use him. <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, hold on a minute. I actually have an, a little tin I can here. I put my pens and pencils in. Hold on. This is, I do this for the... Um, here we go. Hello, I'm C-3PO, human cyborg relations, and this is my counterpart. <laughs> Shut up, Artu. I'm doing an Instagram live. Oh, dear. So, there, but that's... <laughs> I did that. I, I did that one time for uh, one of the sound guys, Lucasfilm, and he goes, "Thanks, you just kind of negated my whole career with a tin can." <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, I, I uh, of course, you know, the first time I came into the studio and realized I was doing three PO, I you know had to go change my underwear, and uh, uh, but a year later, the exact same thing happened with Yoda. I, I I didn't know it, but Frank Oz was shooting. Uh, he'd become a very successful director, and he was uh, he was uh, in New York shooting. I, th I think it was Three Men and a Baby or something. It was a big movie at the time, and same exact thing. I'm just in there reading, you know, whatever, and there's Yoda lines. So I was joking around and reading whatever same exact thing they, they recorded what I was playing with didn't tell me and uh, the next session I show up thinking I'm going to be doing a, you know, a stormtrooper or imperial officer and all these lines are highlighted for Yoda and in yellow you know and I'm like oh I, I think I've got frank script and they're like no you're you're doing that and I was like <laughs> what you know <laughs> Yeah, so um, so yeah, that's that's exactly what happened. You know, same the guy that the same director told me he said he, had, he said it was an absolute replay of what had happened the year before. He said I walked in, held out the same recorder, pressed play ten seconds of you, whatever. And George's like, what? He goes, that's the same guy that's filling in for. I'm like, oh god. So anyway, but, but yeah, I was twenty. Oh my gosh, that was probably ninety five. So, and I've been doing Yoda and, and 3PO since. I mean, the big stuff, the important things, you know, they use uh, Anthony for, of course, but, uh, and Frank. Frank came out of retirement for the last couple of films, which, you know, is, I would love to have done them. Oh my God, but it was so cool. As a fan, I was so happy, you know, to, to hear the man himself, you know, a Jedi Master, you have found, yes. Yeah. So, that was cool. <laughs> My goodness! It, like hearing you is is just so cool. I'm sorry. I'm just like blown <laughs> away. <laughs> I'm just blown away. But like, because it feels like they don't have to do anything to your voice. I know when some people get in the uh, booth, oh yeah, it's, like tweak it to turn it. But with you, it feels like they just have to record and they're done. Like, well, I, that's pretty. That's pretty much the case because I'm lazy. I mean, I I, re <laughs> I I'm no joke. I mean, there's there's you know there's there's guys like you know built. James Arnold Taylor and and uh, and uh, uh, you know some of some of these people I work with, especially uh, 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 oh my gosh, let me think, uh, for like people like Frank Welker, and and that do some of the the monster voices. I mean, they they have to they like contort their faces and yeah yeah figure out that. you know to get these different sounds. I'm just I'm just lazy. I like I read it if I can if it if it uh, comes out of my mouth great i mean d baker i mean if people could see what d does to get some of the voices he gets i mean he literally is like standing on his head and you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it works you know but yeah, like i said i'm too lazy i just kind of just you know if i can do it i i do if i don't i say call you know call jim cummings or call d baker or you know call, right. uh, call james taylor you know but uh yeah, it's a. It, you know, I tell people it's kind of like a. It's kind of like a, a hard drive, you know. It's like if you just click on the app and there it is. It either works or it doesn't. And if it works, I do it. If it doesn't, I'll give you the name of a couple people that can help you out. So. That. Wow. <laughs> well, so I know you've done Yoda for a very long time. Um, I know you. 
you started the Clone Wars Yoda, you started with a uh, Gendi. Yeah. Uh, Gendi. Gendi. Gendi yeah. Gen yeah. How and did it was? No, go ahead. No. Uh, um. Well, I was gonna say, what was it like switching from Gendi to Dave? Well, it. I mean, they're they're different people and they have different styles, but they're both. Yeah you know they come they have a very similar background they you know they have a they themselves are comic book artists and they're brilliant i mean this you know i th those guys have more talent in their pinky finger than i have in my body i mean that's to, to you know i guess you know the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence but i you know i i look at what they do you know and their their ability to draw things and to to conceptualize um, you know the the plot lines and stuff like that and I can't, I can't I couldn't do that and um which is I guess the point you know everybody brings their expertise to the table but um but from my point of view it was it was very similar because my job uh I mean when you're doing <clears throat> when you're when you're doing an existing character it's a completely different job than uh coming up with something new because if you know most you know, 99% of the time you go in to do an audition, it's for a new character and they want to hear your, you know, some something that's new and fresh and strange and weird and wonderful. That is not what they want. If you're trying to do an existing character, they want you to come ex as close as possible to, to the prototype. So, uh, you know, so at that point, you know, my job isn't to put my spin on it. it. It was to make it as close to the originals as possible, so that they can go, "Yeah, this sounds good." You know, because ultimately they have to, they have to play it. Some point they have to hit the play button, and George Lucas is sitting there in the room, and they don't want to go. They don't want to get, uh, you know, their butts chewed. So, anyway. Wow, all this, all the stories you must have just working with all these like great people in this industry, like George and Dave and. Oh, Maybe, I've got yeah. I've got so many stories, and some of them are even true. So, <laughs> um, what's one character you've had the most fun doing lines for? Well, I mean, Yoda's my favorite just because I'm a Star Wars nerd. Um, but the um, I don't know. I would I would say next to that would be uh, the Powerpuff Girls, Professor. You you know. Bubbles, Blossom, Buttercup, you can kick Mojo Jojo's butt tomorrow, but now it's time to do your homework, girls, you know. And uh, I like that one because he's, you know, he's kind of a dorky dad, which is me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and it's, uh, it, it's vocally, it's pretty close to my natural voice. So, you know, that, that was, that was kind of fun. But, uh, yeah, I would say that, that those two are definitely the top of my list. Awesome. Uh, so I would love to talk about Wolverine and the X-Men now, because like I said, I've watched yeah, sure. plenty of times. What was your experience like? Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, wait, just a second. I got to put my... Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> what... <laughs> what was your experience like working on Wolverine and the X-Men? Well, um, you know, the, the, the overall mechanics of it were the same as any other cartoon. You know, we all show up and there's probably six or seven of us and, you know, we're on the six or seven chairs with microphones and the music stand and scripts. And, you know, in, in that regard, it was all pretty standard. You know, there wasn't anything particularly different about it. But, you know, again, I, you know, for me being a, a you know, comic book nerd, just just being on the project was you know, ridiculous. I'm, you know, I'm sitting there and that's, that's where I got to meet Steve uh, Blum, Bloom, I'm sorry. And I mean, who is, I mean, he is Wolverine. I mean, next to Hugh Jackman, you know, there's no, and the thing I always laugh is if you've ever seen Steve, he could play Wolverine. He kind of looks like him. I mean, he really, he totally could be Wolverine <laughs> in a movie. So, but yeah, I, uh, that, that's the, the thing I got out of it more than anything is I got to be friends with Steve and, uh, and uh, that, you know, we, we, gosh, now we've worked on uh, several series and we've run across each other at the conventions and stuff. And I was on Rebels for a, a couple episodes. So, Speaking of Rebels, um, I know uh, Admiral Yolaren came back like, I think, an episode, if I'm correct. 
Yes. What was what was it like coming back to that character after the show uh, got canceled? Well, you know, from a performance point of view, it was again, it was no different than me just doing another episode of the the Clone Wars. But right. but it was cool to you know that to to see some of the artwork, you know, and the, the he clearly he had aged and he was getting closer to the Ularan, you know, on the Death Star. Uh, with the whiter hair, which you know, again, uh, I'm good on white hair. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it was it was just a, uh, you know, again, the the mechanics of it were the same as anything else. But it was just cool because you know, it was, we got to see one more chapter, you know, in in you Lauren's life. You know what what happened to him after this and before this, and so it was kind of cool. Um, how do you come up with new voices? Well, you know, like I said, I I'm pretty lazy. I don't I don't really work at it very much. I just kind of whatever my first impression is, that's what I I send as an audition. Because they are, you know, they they give you they give you direction, you know, it's written most of the time, but they'll say, you know, this guy is 50 to 60 years old and he's got a little gravel in his voice and and they'll sometimes they'll send you a sample. They'll say, you know, like you know say make him sound a little bit like you know wolverine so suddenly i'm like yeah okay whatever you want i'll just you know make him sound like he's the, you know this sort of thing you know and that's kind of that's really for me all there is to it i you know give them a couple versions of that and then if they uh if they like it they they uh have you come in for the callback or in this case you know zoom for the callback <laughs> right and uh yeah, it's it, you know it's it's a pretty cut and dried thing. You just you send them two or three takes and they listen. And if they like you, they they come in and you know then you'll talk to them in person or you know over the phone or whatever. And they'll they'll give you more specific direction. You know at that point, and then you can kind of you know dial it in to to be closer to what they're they're looking for. Awesome, good to hear. Um, back to Wolverine and the X Men. Why did that show get canceled? Do you know anything about that? Oh yeah. Oh no. That yeah. That that was a that was a mess. Um, the uh, hard as it is to believe, back when that was happening, Marvel was going bankrupt. Um, Marvel was was broke. Uh, they they uh, were were trying to. Uh, scrambled to get enough money to even finish the series. So what they did is they 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 did a co-production deal. Again, this is what I heard. I'm you know from the people on the show. I'm sure I've got some of the details wrong, but right. basically they they sold uh, the overseas rights uh, to a couple different companies. One uh, for the UK, and they sold the rights to uh, another uh, group in India and uh, and that gave them the money to to you know be able to finish the show the problem was is apparently the company in India uh, like resold them and didn't pay some bills and then someone sued them and they were they were attaching their their ownership of uh, of the series as you know the judge said you know you have to give that and of course Marvel was like, you can't, no, you can't sell, you can't give a share of our show to some other company, you know. Right. And it ended up in court, and uh, and that killed it. Once, once it, once it started, you know, uh, once the lawyers got involved, it, <laughs> that was the end of that. Oh, yeah. You, dang. Yeah. So Do you know really anything was, about what was going to happen if they made another series? Did they talk to you guys about that? But, no, we had no idea, and it, it was it was a shame though because the ratings were terrific. Uh, they, when that show was, uh, you know, by the time it got through its uh, main season and and was rolling along, it was like winning. I don't know, I'm talking ad speaker, but it was winning its time zone or its, its slot in every city in America that it was running. It was it was like the number one cartoon. So if if it had been allowed to continue, it would have been a a huge a huge series. But uh, I'm sure it probably would have gone, you know, six, seven years at least. But I can only imagine because of the talent, the story they were trying to take it in. I always wanted to know what happened to Professor Xavier. Like, did he ever become? <laughs> I'm just so, oh, I'm so mad. I really wanted to know what happened to Professor Xavier. Um, 
John Bailey's in the chat. He says hello to you. Oh, who? Uh, that's the uh, Epic Boys guy. No, John. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I thought you said John, John Bailey. Yeah, dude. Of course, I know John. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's really yeah. cool. Oh my, geez, really good. No. Of course, I know it. Yeah, he's. I, I I was giving him crap when he was doing those TV commercials <laughs> because, uh, because I said you've you've single handedly made you know tra trailer guys cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he's got a, he's got a good voice. He's a good talent. I'll oh man, no, he's, here. no, he's phenomenal. So we could go back. Um, I know we're kind of all over the show, uh, all over the place with your series. I apologize about that. Um, but I would like to know, um, and also someone else just asked this: What was it like coming back to the Clone Wars for season seven, and how did you know that it was coming back? Well, we all hoped that that was gonna happen. I mean, you know, from the very moment uh, Disney bought them, you know, we we all kind of went, "This could be bad and good." And it turned out to be both. But, uh, you know, anytime there's a, a merger, an acquisition of two companies that size, uh, there's always a lot of changes. So we were, uh, you know, we, we, we were told pretty, you know, early on that, that uh, they were not going to do any more because again, it's a lawyers, uh, because it was on Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network is owned by Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers and Disney don't, you know, <laughs> they're kind of, kind of competitors <laughs> to, put it, to put it mildly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so there was no way Disney was going to keep making a show that was potentially making Warner Brothers more money. Um, so uh, eventually they worked it out, obviously, and then they were able to do the, uh, the, the wrap it all up final season so uh but yeah that's really all it was is you know they were everybody was you know playing tug, you know tug of war to to see who could uh, come out of the deal better yeah so uh, obviously like i said that they must have worked it out because we did it so <laughs> did you record any lines or was that like all pre-recorded because i know there's like um oh no we record no no we did all that new that was all new i mean we had we had recorded um Jeez, maybe two, two episodes, three at most, and not even full episodes. I mean, you know, we've done a little bit here and there, but for the most part, that was all, uh, that was all done after we got the, you know, the green light to, to go ahead and finish it. Okay, good. Cause I know that uh, there was a lot of confusion going on on the internet. Like I heard things from people like, oh, they didn't record any of this is all pre-recorded. Don't get excited. Oh. Da, 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 da. I was like, oh man, that sucks. I would have liked for them to. Come well, we had we the, the rumors. I mean, that, that obviously because we had done a couple episodes <clears throat> that fed those rumors. But are you? I mean, you wouldn't believe this the stuff I heard. I'm like, oh, there are three seasons they've recorded that are just sitting there. I'm like, no, there are not three seasons. Just, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that you put those rumors to rest because I, I know there's. I know people are just scrambling for attention, yeah. trying to push something out there. Oh, I was just really, yeah. Well, um, you know, if it's it's on the internet, so it must be true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about another series that you, well, video game series that you appeared in. One of my friends also asked about this. Talk to you about uh, my oh, I'm saying that wrong. I I'm love, too. no, that, <clears throat> that is one of my favorite characters. It, Hands down for games, absolutely my favorite character. Um, and then I am Tokyo Masaki, and I fight for the glory of the Emperor. This weapon has no honor. How'd you how'd you get that role? Like how did they approach you for that? Just the same as everything, you know, they <laughs> sent out they sent out, you know, uh, a description. They had, you know, a sketch of the character and you know, described his age and you know, his background and I just did my best, you know, in my head. I'm like going, well, okay, what would a, a war? Well, I always say World War II. I, technically, he was from World War I. But, you know, I'm like a turn-of-the-century Japanese uh, soldier. And, and, you know, I tried, I tried to, uh, I tried to as, as the seasons, seasons, as the games went on, uh, you know, we really tried to flesh him out and, and uh, make them more believable you know, more, more real. I mean, if you listen to the original Takio, it's mm -hmm. horrible, but it was on purpose. 
you know, people are like, <clears throat> oh, wow, you got much better at doing Takio. I'm like, no, I could have done this from day one. It's just, they, it was meant to be kind of a cartoon character. Right. And, uh, and there was no, <clears throat> there was no thought about uh, bringing those, those four guys back. It was just like, you know, they were just sort of these funny little side characters that, you know, were going to show up and never be seen again. But they were so popular, they kept bringing them back, you know, game after game after game. So as time went by, you know, they, we tried to, to, to make them more human, you know, more realistic. And uh, yeah, because again, if you listen to the early Takio, it's just god awful. It's like, <laughs> yeah, very, I'll put it. well, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it sounds racist, you know, they, I mean, they're, they're, you look back now and, you know, it, they were just so ridiculously stereotyped you know it just it's you know Especially today if they, MC and Rick oh, I would and, yeah and, I would never no and to, if it, I would never do that today and they wouldn't ask anybody to do that today because it's you know we, we they've turned into you know real human beings <laughs> as real as you know a game can be but. how how was it to switch from an older Takio to a younger Takio? Because I know in uh, the oh, yeah. origins, we were we go back in time to see what yeah. they... I'm so confused on the whole storyline. Oh, we went back in the... you're, you think you're confused? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I no, to this day, I have no idea what, what, the, <clears throat> what the heck was going on. Sorry, I'm drinking tea and it's getting to me. Oh. <clears throat> but yeah, the, um, yeah I, I still don't understand. I worked on the, the thing for 10 years and I, you know, th I was talking to Craig, who, uh, the creator of the thing, he's got, oh, oh God, talk about it. He's got the most awesome Scottish accent. He's like, you talk to him, he's like, yeah, we'll talk you. He does this and then he goes here, over there, and you're like, you oh, know, and I'm just, I'm going, dude, just keep talking. I'm going to steal your voice someday. <laughs> but, uh, I saw the uh, interview you guys did. Yeah. Uh, where it was all of you, Fred, Nolan, yeah, Steve, we you, were, we were at there yeah, we were at their headquarters, which is basically in Santa Monica, and uh, uh, doing the interview, and it was that was a lot of fun. We had to, it was a good that was a good day, but uh, but yeah, he he started trying to explain things. So I'm not, after about five minutes, I'm like, no, 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 never mind. I'm, I'm you're you've already lost me. <laughs> but what intrigued you the most to, for them to decide to go to a uh, younger talk here from the older version that you had? Well, to again, it, it was just, you know, Craig said, make, just do Takio, but make him sound, you know, 25 years older. So I just, you know, took the same voice and I made it a little weaker and a little more gravelly, gravelly with, the, you know, uh, and, uh, I have been sitting in this cell for 20 years, you know. So I just... I know we've been talking that. for about an hour, but I'm st not about an hour, a couple minutes. I'm still shocked at how like well, spot my are all <laughs> So, um, but how was it to finally say goodbye to those characters? Because I know that was kind of like, oh, that I don't know. Oh, that was. Uh, that, that, no, we all we all got very emotional. I mean, you know, we had we'd been working on that that game for a decade. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I mean, there <clears throat> there were days. You know, I used to laugh. I said, I would tell my wife later on. I said, you know, there were there were days where I spent more time with Takio than I did with my family. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, you know, it's any any time you work on a project that that long, uh, you know, and and the kind of emotions that that go with those kind of characters, you know, uh, you get very attached. And it was tough. You know, that was tough. We were all kind of a little. Teary-eyed, you know. Especially so. Steve when he's talking about uh, Tank Dempsey. He's like, "Yeah, I can't." Oh, yeah. Uh, what oh, was I, I think the line was? I, I, think I, I, was, yeah. I, I completely lost it at one point. I couldn't talk. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Have you been keeping up with like the Call of Duty Zombies? Because uh, at all or?" Oh, I, I don't even know how to turn the game on. <laughs> You think I'm oh. joking? I'm not. I I swear to God, right now, if you hand me a disc and, and okay, I don't even are they still on discs or did you just download them? I don't even know anymore. It's, I, it's both. I feel I feel like eventually it's gonna go all digital because of future, but it's both. Yeah. I I, I I've watched my children play it. I I myself have never because you have to in order to play. Uh, 
to get to Tokyo, it's in a it's in a different like a zombie mode. Yeah. It, so you have to you have to play for I don't know what three hours to to get there. Well, I can't play for 13 minutes, you know, without <laughs> dying. So I I have no idea. Yeah, I know. Thanks, but yeah, it's true. No, like, <laughs> no, 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 but no, but it's true. I'm, you know, I'm not really that old. It's just I, you know, it's a, it's a good problem to have. I've been so busy over the last 25 years working. Um, the last thing I'm, I'm going to do at the end of a long day where I've recorded three commercials and four movie trailers and whatever is sit down and then play a game that I'm already. To me, that's like okay, this is something I just worked on. So, uh, yeah, I, I, and, I, oh, and I've got a million kids, so, and I, do, I cook dinner. So by the time we get to the end of the day, it's t I'm done. You know, I don't have, you know, I have no clue how to play any of these things. I'm about, I have a, uh, down in my basement, I've got a, a 1981 uh, uh, Galaga, Gal Galaga, Galaga, I don't know how it's pronounced, but uh, an actual original Galaga machine, and that's that's, that's my left. There I am. That I can do. I can do Galaga. Galaga. <laughs> um. For so there's a new Lego Star Wars game coming out. Um, mm -hmm. it got delayed. I think it got yeah because of Corona. Uh, everything in the industry <clears throat> pushed back. Oh, movies, TV shows. Oh, everything. No, yeah. L. A. L. A. Was is just shut down. So <laughs> yeah. Are who are you voicing anyone? Of course Yoda, but are you voicing anyone else? I yeah I well, uh, I I I do Yoda, Akbar, um, sometimes three PO, but Anthony's actually done doing more of that in the last few years than he used to. So if if uh, if three PO's in there, it's probably Anthony. Um, and and they always have me do you know a couple of miscellaneous like I said t you know Tie Fighter Pilot Number Two or you know Imperial Officer Number Four you know so yeah. but uh, yeah I mean if those characters are in there then that those are me. So. That's great to hear. Um, I have a couple more <laughs> questions for you now. Let you be on your way again. Yep. Thank you so much for giving your time to this. Um, the Bad Batch. That show got announced just this year. I know you can't yeah. talk too much about it. I'm not going to ask you, like, questions that <laughs> like, <laughs> like, snipe. But has that started, or is it still in production? Or has it, like, started? Out? Well, well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, yes, they're, there's, they're still producing it, and they're still working on the, on the first season. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, unlike, uh, a live action TV series where you've got a set with, you know, 150 people that could all be passing terms to each other. You know, you can do uh, uh, work on a cartoon from home. You know, you can have an animator, you know, in his spare bedroom doing his and another one over here doing that. And, and, you know, they, when I recorded my stuff for that, um, um, I actually happened to be back in LA. So I went into the studio to do, to do what I did, but the, um, so yeah, it's it's different because it's animation. So there's a lot more flexibility for people to, you know, work out of their house on something like that. So um, I, you know, I haven't talked to anybody in in several months uh, that that's working on that. So I I assume there's still, uh, you know, there's still probably a lot of tinkering left to do. But dang, yay! Dang, I hate when Instagram cuts me off because then I get lost and then I'm just like, wait, what was I talking about? <laughs> is that is that is that true for everything on Instagram? That's there like one hour limit and it just shuts you off? For Instagram Live, yeah. There's oh, okay. it off. It does a limit on everything. I promise you on Instagram there's a limit. If you don't have ten thousand followers, you can't like put a swipe up link in your bio for people to like swipe up on and people oh, okay. see it. Uh, if Instagram, if you don't have like a million followers or something, there's a time limit. Because I know, like, um, I don't know if you've been watching them. These, they're called versus battles on Instagram that they've been doing. They put like popular artists against each other, and though, yeah, it's really cool. But they last for like two hours plus. But we smaller creators have a one hour time limit. It's uh, the worst thing ever. It's terrible. But I, well, I learned something today. <laughs> this will be our last little thing before right, I ask no my big final question. This is called Weird and Wacky. Now, this is the first person, you're the first person I'm doing this with. 
Now I'm gonna put on a one minute timer and have one minute to answer like weird and random questions I just come up with off the top of my head. All right, I'll do my best. <laughs> okay. If people like this, then I'll do it for my next interview. If people don't you'll like have it, a, you'll you'll have a new thing. I have a new thing, right? All right, so I'm gonna start the. All right, I'm gonna start the timer. Are you ready? Yep. All right, three, two, one. Okay. What's the weirdest food you've ever eaten? Weirdest what? Food. Dog. <laughs> In Vietnam. Oh, okay. If you had to smell like one smoke for the rest of your life, what would you want to smell like? Oh, steak. Mm, would you rather have no hands or no feet? Oh, no feet. Would you rather have feet for hands or hands for feet? Jeez. I'd rather have four hands, I guess, if I had to choose, yeah. Um, would you rather climb up walls or would you rather run fast? Oh, climb up walls. Yeah, like a, like Spider-Man. Yeah, right yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, weirdest trip you've been on? Weirdest trip? Well, I mean, I... The weirdest, you know, the f most distant place I've gone is Vietnam a couple times. Uh, yeah, uh, Egypt. I used to live in Egypt. Cool. All right. That's been <laughs> one minute. And now <laughs> we're in a wacky with Tom K, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that because I'm probably going to keep doing yeah, that. Yeah, so, so, some, somewhere I've got pictures of me at the top of one of the uh, Great Pyramids. Uh, at Giza at midnight I was up there with a friend and there was a full moon and we took pictures of the Cairo it, it just bizarre but uh, yeah that's that's probably the weirdest place I've ever been for a vacation <laughs> well on a vacation I lived there I lived in, in Cairo but yeah you're so lucky you're so lucky <laughs> so lucky alright two more things and then we're done this last question is really important I ask everyone this question uh, every person I've interviewed i've asked this question before i do my little thing little off segment what would be a current message to the world during these current times that we live in because you know there's got corona going on we have a uh, election coming up we have protests what would you say to people right now who are looking for hope and feel kind of a uh, distant you know that some somebody a long time ago and this is long before the internet said that there's a dis, uh, there's a, 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 a ratio of, of, of how mean and nasty you are that's an inverse proportion to how far away you are from a person. And, and what it really boils down to is if you treated people the way you would if they were 24 inches in front of your face, you, you wouldn't say half the stuff that people say on Twitter and stuff. You, you, you know, if there was somebody in your, in your living room you could have a discussion and people don't do that anymore. They, you know, everything is screaming and yelling and, you know, it just, that's, you know, that's the, that's the thing that makes me crazy is like, just talk to people like you would if they were your guest. <laughs> so be nice. Yes. Yeah, so, all right. Um, well, and this but, one more thing. Could yes. you, one of my friends asked, could you do uh, the Clone Wars announcer answer for us? Like oh. just a line or something. Empire at War, as the planet Ryloth falls under attack, Jedi Master Anakin Skywalker and his Padawan Ahsoka Tano. Thank you so much. All right, Tom. Um, Thank was, you. This, um, you know, as someone who has started uh, just this year interviewing people, for you to agree to do this, I just, it really makes me so grateful so humble and just beyond well, happy thank you. to have you on and just thank you so much i feel, mm -hmm. I feel emotional i'm getting a little <laughs> no nah, it's much. dude i get it man i was your age once too and i was you know the same as you are now so it's it's good man so thank you absolutely thank you so much tom for you got being. it I'll, I'll keep in touch with you and uh, yeah, drop me an email and i'll i'll send you signed pictures or something so <laughs> Have a great one, Tommy. You Thank too. You so much. Bye, guys. Right. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>